Hello and welcome to a Python string formatting tutorial. In this video, we'll be talking about how to format Python strings. I am Jason Rigdon and let's get started. Okay, so we have a bit of a problem. Uh, we have some variable or variables that we need inserted into a string. Uh, for example, we've got the color red here, count five, and we want to use these variables to make a string that reads, there are five red robots. Okay, option one is concatenation. So we can get our variables here and we can do result and just kind of add them together. Hopefully you've seen string concatenation before in Python. It can get kind of long and you can't do anything really fancy with it. Um, there is a bit of an error also. Uh, there's a type error. Uh, if you are using integers or other numbers or be actually any kind of object. Um, it does need oftentimes to be turned into a string in order to be properly concatenated. Um, it can be a problem. Uh, option two is string formatting with a percentage formatting. Uh, I, it's a little bit shorter. It looks a little bit better, but it, it's, I'm not, I don't know. Okay, we're going to three. This, this is the meat of it. This is the best one. This is the one that I like. This is my favorite one, in my opinion. Um, okay, so we've got our color red, our count five, and here we go. So it basically, we've got our string here, and we just have these brackets replacing the variables. How nice and short it is, and then down here we've got a nice little function where we say count and color. I think it's nice, concise, and see, as you will see, um, there are a lot of interesting little tricks you can do. Um, what else can it do? Uh, we can reorder the variables. So here we go. We've got our same variables here, but we can change them around. So previously the brackets were, the variables were being replaced by the, or the brackets were being replaced by the variables in the order in which they were um, specified, right? So here we got color and count. So what it would end up being is there are red five robots. <laughs> Um, we can specify the index of the variables we want. So here we go. We want this one first. Uh, we want the one that has an index of one here. So we've got this would be zero. Oops, color is zero. Count is one. So there you go. So you can change the order of them. It can be useful. Um, you can also reuse them. So let's say you want to use um, number or count twice, you can do that by um, specifying them. So here we go. Um, the variable with the index of one is being used here and it's also being used here. So we have five, five red robots are five in total. Um, hopefully that is clear. Okay, uh, another cool thing to do with is padding and alignment. Uh, so we want a padding of 10 characters on left alignment we've got the same brackets with some new parameters in here so that's going to say that we want the padding here and we want a lot left aligned do the same thing with the right aligned um you can also center align it so very very nifty um and we can even fill it with things that live in spaces so the default is spaces but we can um, specify so here we've got um, specified underlines and underlines for each one. So we've got our, um, what would that be, our right align. Oh, I guess there's two right aligns. There's a mistake, a terrible, terrible mistake in this code. Don't look at it, but you saw the last slide. So hopefully it will still make sense. Okay, we can truncate them. Oftentimes you've got uh, variables that are very large and you need to have them shrunk down. Here we go. In this here, we are saying that we just want, actually, let me take care of something here. I got a little wire in the we uh, want Metroplex to be shortened to five characters and it will do that for us right here, which is very nice, especially if you're doing names that can be extremely long, personal names. I mean, some people just have very short names, some people have very long names and sometimes that won't fit in your right? So, uh, braces. So what if you want uh, these curly braces? Well, you just double them up. So here we go, got the count. We just double up these curly braces and it appears here. Sense? Hopefully it makes sense. Okay, formatting numbers, this is kind of fun. Okay, so um, we've got that count and we can specify it as a float and then it will give us some decimal points. 
um, kind of faults to this. I don't remember what number it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like it defaults to six decimal points. It doesn't really help us too much when we have a whole number like five, but you know, it, that might be the only whole number. The rest of them could be, you know, very specific. Um, usually you're going to want to say how many decimal points you actually want displayed. And so that's what this will show you right here. So we're going to say we want two decimal points for a float number. And so that gives us our two decimal points for our float number. It's for, so we're looking for matting. Um, you can also round the floats. So here we go. So count is now 5.5 and we're going to round it and it automatically rounds it to six. So in case you have a formatting option where you don't want to show the decimal amounts, you just want to round the nearest whole number. That'll take care of that. Um, side numbers. So negative numbers are automatic. So here we go. We've got a count of negative five and there are negative five robots. Um, positive numbers are not automatic, but we can specify them as you see here. Inside the little brackets, we're gonna specify a little change where we do want it to be a positive number or show that it is a positive number. Uh, we can also put automatically put commas in very large numbers. So, I mean, for me personally, I like the commas in large numbers because it helps me do, you know, 100. I was in million. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a hundred million. Um, without these commas, I it's hard for me to figure out. I have to mentally insert those commas. I don't know if anybody else is out there like that, but I am. So I like that it will automatically add those commas and a nice little concise notation. You know how to specify that you want those uh, commas added. You also show exponential notation. So we have um, a thousand here. And with a little E, we can specify, and then I'll print out this, oh, very annoying. <laughs> I don't really like the exponential notation. So maybe that's uh, just me, but I suppose it will be very useful if you're using very, very, very large numbers in your Python program. I'm going to show decimal numbers, which is basically what we've been working with. Um, we can also do binary. So here we go. We've got a count of a thousand. Here is a thousand in binary, in case you want to specify that. Also show hexadecimal. Little X there will make us hexadecimal. Octal too. We can do uh, one thousand and octal. So there are seventeen fifty red robots. Oh, when we reach the end of our slides, um, these are all of the uh, little functions I thought would be interesting to share. So next time, think about double. Think about maybe not using string concatenation. Think about using the nice formatting we saw earlier. It's just the words. And we'll go all the way back. It's just so much nicer to use. Um, I see a lot of people continuing to use the concatenation, which is okay, very small things. But um, in my experience, it's been a matter of, I usually regret doing it later. It's one of those things where a stitch in time will, but I don't know what the rest of that, that uh, saying is, but it'll, it'll be, you'll be happy with yourself later. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll have more Python tutorials coming up. Hopefully they'll, they'll get better. They'll get better. I'm getting used to it. Um, so once again, thanks for watching. If you like it, um, like the video. And if you want to see more, um, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching and uh, hope to uh, see you again soon. Thank you.